Shabbat Shalom, everyone. My name is S, and I'm taking you on my conversion journey. So it is Friday, and I'm sorry. I know I said that I would be posting videos on Monday, but I'm really enjoying making these videos. So I'll get. No, actually, I'm not even gonna make promises, <laughs> but I'll. I'm definitely gonna be posting maybe more than one video a week. So since it is Friday, I wanted to do some more of a freestyle thing. I was doing my regular researching and scrolling, and I found um, a few articles about what people should never say to converts or ask converts. So, you know, I like controversy. <laughs> So I decided to go through all these uh, questions or demands or statements and answer them for you. I am an open book, so I found some of these quite interesting because I think I've experienced each and every one of them. <laughs> so uh, if you're converting, just um, be on the lookout or if you are a Jewish person and you meet a convert like myself, um, I think this is uh, this might be a good video to watch if you're hesitant about what to say to them and how you should actually be behaving. So let's get into it. Number one, don't ask why he or she is converting or don't ask why he or she converted. I, I don't think anybody follows this rule, <laughs> but like I said, I'm an open book, so I don't mind it. But I could see why people get a, might get a bit triggered or annoyed by it. Recently, I, I experienced uh, a coworker like harassing me <laughs> because I'm, you know, I'm wearing skirts at work. I'm like reading Jewish books all the time, and she was just like, "Why are you converting?" Your mother didn't give you a religion. You're, it's sad that you're, you're not following your mother's religion. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> that was completely off the wall. Wasn't expecting that. But in the beginning, I'm, I was fine with, why are you converting? Why are you converting? And I, I personally don't find it a, a big deal. But it's good to always have a, a legit response. My response now is I'm just trying to get closer to God. Obviously for you guys, I'm going in much greater detail, but coming across people who do ask you can get, it can get a little annoying, but you have to understand that people are, are curious and even though they shouldn't be asking that, people are probably gonna ask anyway. So build up a very good wallet, uh, a good container of responses to this because this is the number one question I am asked all the time. Number two, don't tell others he or she is converting or converted. Now this, I had a unique uh, situation with this. I remember I was probably at work because I'm always at work and I came across one of one of my clients who um, is reformed Judaism and she wasn't really uh, she she didn't really follow the holidays and, and not not like how I plan on following them and uh, we were having a conversation and she realized wow you know a lot about Judaism and then I had a few coworkers say, yeah, she's converting. And in my mind, I was just like, whoa, <laughs> that wasn't your place to say that. And I do think people should be kind and, and just be a bit more self-aware to, to not blurt out someone else's business, especially something so personal like converting to a different religion because it, it can open the door to many different conversations that you're probably not ready for. The way I, I handled this was for the people I work with or the people in my orbit, I, I just usually tell them like, listen, I am converting, but just don't tell anyone. 
<laughs> because I want to be the one to say it and bring it up if it's necessary. You know, it, it doesn't need to, to be brought up in every conversation, but you just want to make sure that you have control over where that conversation goes and somebody else doesn't blurt that information out unnecessarily because it can catch you off guard. Um, it caught me off guard when they said that. And, and then like, it was just like a bunch of other responses. Like, yeah, she's converting and she's doing this and this and this. And I was just like, okay, I get they're excited. But that was a bit like, chillax. <laughs> it's my business and uh, it's my life. And I want to be the one to tell people. So I just make that clear with whoever knows about your conversion that just to keep it to themselves. And if you feel open to it, you'll be the one to tell people. This one I found quite interesting. I think I might disagree with it. Remember, no one looks like a convert. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I think, I, do I look like a convert? Um, obviously there's no like set image of what a Jew does look like. We may think we know, but that's just us just stereotyping and just following through with what we think we might know about Jewish culture. I get what the article was saying about this. Like, you don't know who might be Jewish. You don't know, you know, but I, won't, I wouldn't be offended, really, if someone said, like, you don't look Jewish. I wouldn't be offended because normally Jewish people don't have braids <laughs> and my skin, like, you know. So I, I, laugh at, I laugh at it all the time. This one is not something I, I wouldn't be so offended. Or maybe, maybe I'm not there yet to feel offended. Maybe because I'm still... You know, I'm only halfway through this. Like, I, I still have to experience a lot of emotions and a lot of growth. And maybe I I need, um, I need to have a bit more time to, to, to feel offended by this or, or, or to get to that level of this. But I'm, I'm, always, I'm not somebody who gets offended easily. So if somebody genuinely makes a mistake or says something like, listen, you don't, you didn't look like a Jew. So, you know, I'm just going to be like, okay, well, and, and take that opportunity to educate them. You know, Jews don't have a specific look, you know, we all come in different shapes and sizes and cultures. I mean, not cultures, but like we all come, may come from different backgrounds and it's just, uh, it's just something you could point out and maybe educate them and laugh about it later. Okay, so the next one is converts are not therapists. This one is 100% true. <laughs> um, people, like I said, it's, it's different because I am very much taking you all on my journey. But most people don't do this. Most people just are quiet about their conversion and just, you know, do it and that's it. Um, I'm not a therapist, well, no, I lied. I am a therapist, but like, I'm not here to, like, especially in person, I don't wanna sit and talk so much about myself and about all this all the time. And I do start to feel like people are doing that with me because they're curious and it goes along with, with a few of the points in the beginning of this video. Listen, we're not we're not therapists. We don't we don't have all the answers. I don't know everything, you know, but we we just want to be seen as equal. I'm a Jew, you're a Jew. We'll all just be one happy Jew family. <laughs> Here's another one. Don't assume someone converted for marriage. So in the beginning of my conversion, um, I was asked this a lot, a lot. Um, and for me, I, I feel like I've, not, I've, I've heard people say stories about, oh, she converted for her husband and she converted, you know, and I'm just like, I didn't think that it was a problem. But as I'm going through this process, I realized that you cannot do this for someone else. 
it doesn't even matter how much you love this person. This whole journey has to be your own decision. And for someone to tell me right now that I'm converting for someone else really, really hurts my heart because I've put in, I'm putting in so much work, so much time. I'm reading like 10 books a day. I'm, I'm you know, really dedicated wholeheartedly to this. And for somebody to put that emphasis in the hands of someone else and, and give them all the credit really is a slap in my face. You know, in order to change, like to agree to change your life like this, to live an orthodox Jewish life, it's, it, ta it takes a lot of courage and a lot of dedication to want to be this way. And people, some people can't comprehend it. They're just like, I, I don't understand anyone who would want to change their life and live their life like this, which is fine. It's not meant for everybody to understand, but they they start to create their own answers to their questions and just be like oh she's just converting to to be with so and so or so and so and i just think that that's just a bad thing bad rumor to spread don't don't assume that it's this process is, is beyond just like doing it for someone else and for someone to agree to convert it's uh it's a decision made from the heart at least I'm speaking for myself. I don't know, maybe somebody did convert from marriage, but that's not what I'm doing here. The next one is, goy jokes aren't funny. So I was reading this book and I just came across this word and I looked it up and I'm like, okay, so this means, this is like a derogatory term for someone who's not Jewish or someone who is Jewish but doesn't practice or kind of left the religion. I'm all for jokes. You can make fun of me, I'm, I'm fine with it. But like, I could see why this may, may uh, get out of control, get out of hand, and just like any other slang term that every, every culture, every race faces. I just think we should be careful um, and things can get sensitive. Things can get sensitive because there's that, that cloud around us that we weren't born Jewish, so we have to one-up everybody. I'm letting you guys know right now that I am not trying to one-up anyone or anyone. I'm not in competition with someone who was born Jewish. I'm not trying to... Uh, outsmart people who have been in this culture their whole entire lives but that doesn't that doesn't degrade all that I've done or diminish all that I have learned because I wasn't born Jewish and I if someone wants to make fun of me because of that the jokes better be funny and they better be tasteful because other than that, you're just you're just the mean person. I'm not down for for mean people in my life. So if you, I can't control what's said behind my back. What you say behind my back, I'm not. It's not meant for me. It's none of my business. But if I'm in front of you and you say a go goy joke, I mean, I don't take. Uh, I'm somebody who just. I'm not gonna hold it against you. I'm not gonna like cry in a corner but i could see why why it, it's a big deal and it could become insulting so as a comfort just be aware of that and for someone who is jewish be aware of this too some of us are a little sensitive <laughs> the next one is don't ask them how their family is taking it so i've already said it several times um most of my family doesn't know that I'm going through a conversion process. Um, and the main thing that's holding me back is my mother. I'm just a scary cat. <laughs> um, I'm afraid to tell my religious Jewish, my religious Jewish mother, my religious 
I'm afraid to tell my religious Christian mother that I'm converting to Judaism. Not yet. Eventually, obviously, the time will come. Um, but this, this, this is extremely sensitive for me, and it might be for you too, or um, for anyone who, who's thinking about going through this process and doesn't necessarily have all the family support they need. And I think it's just something people need to be aware of. People might ask you this. And in my case, I'm asked this a lot. And I just tell them the truth. I'm like, they don't know. They don't know. And I like that they don't know right now because like I said, it's a process. And I'm able to form my own thoughts and able to just make my own decisions throughout this whole entire thing without somebody telling me don't do it or somebody telling me what are you doing or somebody saying just push yourself and you know i do have one sister two sisters actually who do know and they're extremely supportive very supportive and it, it might be a problem with me i i might just be too afraid and i have an image in my head that of how they will react or they'll just be like it's your life. And if you're happy, I'm happy. I hope it's the second one. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, this can get, it can get sensitive. So don't, I would refrain from ever asking this. It's, it's just too personal. Unless you are really close to the person who's converting. Even that I would try to reword the, the question a bit or, or still avoid it. Like it's it's just way too personal and it's it's hard. It's hard. So when somebody asks me how my family's taking it, I just they don't know. And we move forward. The next one is don't laugh. I've I've had everyone laugh when I tell them I'm converting to Judaism. It's such an insult. It's I'm laughing because I'm an idiot, but like, it's such an insult. When somebody says this, like, I have people like making fun of me. I have people calling me a Jew girl now. Like it, I don't know. I think that's just how people are taking it. And maybe they don't, they don't know how to actually make sense of it. So they're just trying to find the humor with it and, um, it's definitely inappropriate. You can either call them out on this or just don't talk to them about the conversion process anymore. There's only a select few people that I speak to speak to about this process. My YouTube channel and um, a few of my close friends because I don't like being laughed at for a major decision in my life. And I would rather just keep that near and dear to my heart and just focus on telling the people who will have a major impact or who will be impacted by this. So if you tell somebody they're convert you're converting and they laugh, don't tell them anything anymore. <laughs> the next one is don't force converts to recite their entire Jewish resume. Now, this one is funny because people people do just that. What do you know about Judaism? Who influenced you? How did you do this? How did you do that? You know, what what is your family going to think? Tell me more. What do you know about this? You should know this. You should know. I'm letting you guys know. By, even by the end of the conversion, I most likely will not know everything about Judaism. I don't even think born Jews know everything about Judaism. It's, it's a lifetime of learning. It's a lifetime of learning. As it even, even after I'm gone, there'll still be stuff that I haven't learned yet, you know, and Sure, I'll get better, better at it as the years go on. But going through this conversion process is not a just is not just about learn every little thing about Judaism. You have to know it within twelve months. That's not that's not how it's going to go down. 
I'm going to live a Jewish life and practice living a Jewish life every day. And with that, I'll, I'll become a better Jew. But you, as a convert, like you are not obligated to answer questions from people like, like you're like in school, in Jewish school for the rest of your life. So if somebody is heckling you and, and, and you feel like you have to capitulate to all of their Jewish questions, just know that you don't. You don't have to, to answer to anyone. No one's in charge of you. No one should be keeping track of, of what you know about Judaism. That's all here and here. So don't be, don't feel forced to, to tell anyone all that you know. Just practice being a better Jew, do your studies, and be around people who make you feel comfortable. So the last one is something that I think everyone in all Jewish communities all over should do and should, should ask, which is offer to connect converts to more Jews. And as I like go and continue to, to <clears throat> as I go on my journey and I'm continuing to chat with people and and meet new Jews, like I always ask like, hey, is there anyone you could connect me with or that might, that I might um, vibe with or relate to on this journey to talk to? Because you're going to need a community. And now that, you know, I hate to say, I hope this isn't the case, but you know, we're go we're still battling coronavirus. And now we have this new variant. Like it's 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 a bit scary again. So right now for conference it's hard to to do some of the things that we've been doing that we we would be doing had this virus not be around. So get used to reaching out to people online and ask them, hey, you've been Jewish your whole life. Do you know anyone who I might be able to connect with? And this is not like romantically. <laughs> this is just to get more friends. And I, I want to make, I want to put myself out there even more. I leave my email with you guys so you guys can talk, contact me if you want to connect with me in any way and, and chat with me about whatever topics. So like, please like talk to me, <laughs> please, I need, I need a community. <laughs> but I think this is a wonderful thing. And ever since I've been connected uh, to my family that I've been doing Shabbos with, I, I love how she has just been like, here, I'll give you my niece's number. She's your age, you could talk to her. I have this person, talk to her, I have this. You know, and I'm just like, this is beautiful because now I'm building up a community of people that I could contact anytime. I could text people a good Shabbos and, you know, wish them hugs on the holidays. Like it's, it's feeling real. So always connect, connect everyone to every Jew possible. <laughs> so tonight, um, you know, it's Shabbat. I'll be going to my Jewish family's dinner again. This will be the second time we're joining. And I'm definitely gonna, maybe I should make like a Shabbos like segment of all like my dinners with them. Um, after, I, didn't, I don't know if I made, I said this in, in the last video I made with them, but after our last uh, dinner, they they called me and they said that they felt so connected towards me that they they were just blown away by it 
and they were just like we love you immediately and i was just like oh my god <laughs> It just feels great to be accepted, like, for who I am, you know, and to have such a welcoming family and welcoming me into their home, especially at this time, I'm, I'm extremely grateful. So I brought, I, I purchased kosher wine for them for the first time, for the first time I, I went there. And it turns out they're not big drinkers like I am, as you can see. And um, they, we spent like 15 minutes searching the house for like a wine opener. We had to walk to somebody's neighbor house. So it was like a running joke. So my joke with them is that I'll be building their wine cellar. And every Friday I just bring them wine. And I thought it was a cute little thing I would share with you guys. A little piece of me in them with you. Because I'm taking you guys all on this journey and it's, it's becoming amazing. So maybe my next video, I, I'm not even gonna tell you guys what I'm gonna talk about because I talk about everything. So thank you guys so much for, for liking and subscribing and we will talk next time. So I wish you guys a Shabbat Shalom and good Shabbos.